Good morning. It is Wednesday, July the 7th, 2021, and this is another edition of Cafe Devo, coming to you almost live from First Congregational Church in beautiful downtown Duran, Michigan. I'm Pastor Steve Wood, about three cups of coffee into my morning, and my pal Bugsy is hanging out here with me. I hope your Wednesday is going well. This is day 32 of our Purpose Driven Summer Emphasis here at First Congregational Church, and we're reading from the book, The Purpose Driven Life. It was written by Pastor Rick Warren and is copyright 2002, Zondervan Publishing. Romans chapter 12, verse 5. Since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be. God deserves your best. He shaped you for a purpose. And he expects you to make the most of what you have been given. He doesn't want you to worry about or covet abilities you do not have. Instead, he wants you to focus on what he has given you to use. When you attempt to serve God in ways that you're not shaped for, it feels like forcing a square peg into a round hole. It's frustrating and produces limited results. It also wastes your time, your talent and your energy. The best use of your life is to serve God out of your shape. To do this, you must discover your shape, learn to accept it, and enjoy it, and then develop it to its full potential. The Bible says don't act thoughtlessly, but try to find out and do whatever God wants you to do. Don't let another day go by. Start finding out and clarifying what God intends you to be doing within the body of Christ and the local church. Begin by assessing your gifts and abilities. Take a long, honest look, maybe even today, at what you are good at and what you're not good at. Paul wrote, try to have a sane estimate of your capabilities. So make a list. Ask other people for their candid opinion. Tell them you're searching for the truth, not fishing for a compliment. Spiritual gifts and natural abilities are always confirmed by others. They can see it. If you think you are gifted to be a teacher or a singer and no one else agrees, guess what? If you want to know if you have the gift of leadership, just look over your shoulder. If no one is following you, you're probably not a leader. Ask questions like these. Where have I seen fruit in my life that other people confirmed? Where have I already been successful? Spiritual gift tests and ability inventories can have some value, but they are limited in their usefulness because they are standardized and they don't take into account your uniqueness. There are also no definitions of spiritual gifts given in the Bible, and the lists that are included there are not comprehensive. There are other spiritual gifts as well as those. Another problem is that the more mature you become, the more likely you are to manifest the characteristics of a number of gifts. You may be serving or teaching or giving generously out of spiritual maturity rather than because it is your spiritual gift. So the best way to discover your gifts and abilities is to experiment with different types of service. Many books get the discovery process backwards. They say discover your spiritual gift, and then you'll know about what ministry you're supposed to have. It actually works exactly the opposite way. Just start serving, experimenting with different ministries, and then you'll discover your gifts. Until you're actually involved in serving, you're not going to know what you're good at. You have dozens of hidden abilities and gifts you don't even know about because you've never actually tried them. So. Try doing some things you've never done before, no matter how old you are, 
Never stop experimenting. Also, consider your heart and your personality. Paul wrote, make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given, and then sink yourself into that. Again, it helps to get feedback from those who know you best. Ask yourself questions. What do I really enjoy doing? When do I feel the most alive? What am I doing when I lose track of time? Do I like routine or variety? Do I prefer serving with a team or by myself? Am I more introverted or extroverted? Am I more a thinker or a feeler? Which do I enjoy more, competing or cooperating? Examine your experiences and extract the lessons you have learned. Go back over your life. Do a little review and think about how it has shaped you. Moses told the Israelites, remember today what you have learned about the Lord through your experiences with him. Forgotten experiences are worthless. That's a good reason to keep a spiritual journal. Yes, write the stuff down. Paul worried that the believers in Galatia would waste the pain they had been through. And so he told them, were all your experiences wasted? I hope not. Extracting the lessons from your experiences takes time. Maybe you should take an entire weekend for a life review retreat where you pause to see how God has worked in the various defining moments of your life and consider how he wants you to use those lessons to help others. If you need them, there are some resources around that can help you do this. Remember, above all else, your shape was sovereignly determined by God for his purpose. So you should not resent it or reject it. Instead of trying to reshape yourself to be like someone else, you should celebrate the way God has made you. The Bible says Christ has given each of us spiritual abilities whatever he wants us to have out of his rich storehouse of gifts. God wants you to enjoy using your shape. The Bible says be sure to do what you should, for then you will enjoy the personal satisfaction of having done your work well, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. Satan will try to steal the joy of service from you in a couple of ways. He will tempt you to compare your ministry with others, and by tempting you also to conform your ministry to the expectations of others. Both of these are deadly traps that will distract you from serving in the ways God intended. Whenever you lose your joy in ministry, go back and consider if either one of these temptations is the cause. The Bible warns us never to compare ourselves with others. Do your own work well, it says, and then you will have something to be proud of, but don't compare yourself with others. There are at least two reasons why you should never compare your shape, ministry, or the results of your ministry with anyone else. First, you will always be able to find someone who seems to be doing a better job than you, and you will become discouraged. Or you will always be able to find someone who doesn't seem as effective as you, and you will find yourself full of pride. Either one of these attitudes will take you out of service and rob you of your joy. Paul said, it is foolish to compare ourselves with others. He, he wrote, we do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, <laughs> they are not wise. The message paraphrase puts it this way. In all this comparing and grading and competing, they miss the point. You will find that people who do not understand your shape for ministry will at times criticize you and try to get you to conform to what they think you should be doing. Ignore them. Paul often had to deal with critics who misunderstood and maligned his service. His response was always the same. Avoid comparisons. Resist exaggerations and seek only God's praise. One of the reasons Paul was used so greatly by God was that he refused to be distracted by criticism or comparisons. Jesus' parable of the talents illustrates that God expects, expects us to make the most of what he gives us. 
We are to cultivate our gifts and abilities, keep our hearts aflame, grow our character and personality, and broaden our experiences so we will be increasingly more effective in his service. If you don't exercise your muscles, they weaken and atrophy. In the same way, if you don't utilize the abilities and skills God has given you, you will lose them. Jesus taught the parable of the talents to emphasize this truth. Referring to the servant who failed to use his one talent, the master said, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents. Fail to use what God has given you and you will lose it. Use the ability you've got and God will increase it. Paul told Timothy, be sure to use the abilities God has given you. Put them to work. In heaven, you and I are going to serve God forever. Right now, we can prepare for that eternal service by practicing here on earth. Like athletes preparing for the Olympics, we keep training for the big day. They do it for the gold medal, the Bible says, but it tarnishes and fades. You're after one that's gold eternally. We're getting ready for eternal responsibilities and eternal rewards. And so remember this, God deserves my best. We invite your presence this day, Lord. We call upon you in the name of Christ, and we ask you to bless us. Bless us so we can be a blessing. Guard our thoughts, guide our steps, and watch over our tongues so that we can speak lovingly and treat one another with kindness and respect. Bless us in these things, Father, and may we bring you glory, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, that's going to do it for us on this Wednesday edition of Cafe Devo, day 32 of our Purpose Driven Summer Emphasis. And oh, by the way, it's Brett Stull's birthday today. So join me in wishing Brett a happy birthday. For now, this is Pastor Steve Wood signing off. God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>